Hey guys, welcome to another episode of More Style Podcast. Today we have Clint Stoy. He's the uh, head baseball coach for Allen Community College in Iola, Kansas. And I'm pretty excited to have him on because um, I know a lot of people think that junior college is not beneficial. And I really want people to know how beneficial um, starting at a junior college is. Um, and, um, you know, and obviously what it takes to play at a junior college level. So, Coach, I really appreciate you for for being on today. How about we get started with you, introducing yourself, and then we'll we'll just jump in with the questions. Uh, yeah, no, I appreciate it. Um, my name's Clint Stoy. I'm the head baseball coach at Allen Community College. Uh, this is my ninth season. Uh, I've coached at, I played junior college myself, and then I uh, went to the University of, or went to Southern Miss, University of Southern Mississippi. I played on Team USA. Um, did not play professional baseball, immediately went into scouting uh, with the Chicago White Sox uh, at 22 years old. And then I've coached at Crowder College, uh, Nickel State University, Labette Community College, University of New Mexico. Um, I won a national title at Iowa Western, and then I got the head coaching job here. So I appreciate you having me. No, awesome, man. Um, so you've been there how, how long? You said nine years? Yeah, this is my ninth season. It feels like about two, but right. uh, yeah. Right. Okay, well, so let's go ahead and get started. So um, so what do you think right off the bat? What do you think is the benefit of uh, starting off, you know, playing at the junior college level? I, I, for me, there's several benefits. And again, um, when you, I've been at Division Ones and I've been at, uh junior colleges that's the i've been at three division ones and five or six junior colleges without counting off the top of my head and so i've experienced both so i'm not just talking out of one side of my mouth to try to benefit my program or advocate you know i'm just speaking truth so when we grew up or when i grew up uh junior colleges were perceived as you go to a junior college if you aren't smart enough to go to a four-year school or you're not good enough to go to a four-year school right. that is absolutely not the case so for us um I'll, I'll tell you this my first five or my first six years before COVID hit our team grade point average finished top 10 in the country every single year um of all junior colleges in the entire nation so wow. that goes to show you this fall we had a 3.41 team gpa and 32 of our 37 guys had over a 3.0 wow so we get kids that have 29 30 acts and they come here for the smaller class environments they come here for the ability to play right away mm -hmm. uh if you go if you just were to count out how many guys in division one baseball that are true freshmen play right away there's it's it's less than 10 percent easily and they red shirt they do this they do they don't get to actually play then you take every kid's dream is to what play professional baseball right right so if you go to a four-year school you're not eligible for professional baseball till after your junior year where if you go to a two-year school a community college or a junior college you're eligible for the draft right after your first year mm -hmm. and then you kids go to a junior college and they open up doors. So if they're a senior in high school and they have one low to mid major division one offer offer or whatever, then they go for two years to a junior college, they grow, they develop, then they have, they, they aren't closing any doors. As soon as you walk into that four year school, you're shutting that door. That's where right. you're at. You, you know, you could, your freshman year, you could hit 1000 home runs and, and throw 128 miles an hour you're not going to get drafted because mm -hmm. you can't it's right. against the rules and so for for me um there's several benefits with playing time smaller class sizes um cost the right. cost effectiveness of it our school mm -hmm. is a little under a little under eleven thousand dollars for books tuition fees room and board without a scholarship for the entire year so I think where a lot of it gets mistook is people still have the perception that community colleges and junior colleges are for misfits are for renegades are for, you know, and it, I, I'm not going to lie. It, it's not, it's not very glamorous mm -hmm. 
who sit around the country club table and tell your friends that my son is committed in signing to Allen Community College versus he's going to the University of Oklahoma or wherever, you name it, university right. to pay $25,000 a year to probably redshirt and then get gone. Right. You know, you look at you look at uh, how many kids are on the roster to start at major universities and then they have to they have to, by rule, cut it down. So 15 to 20 kids are getting told you're not here anymore. So at our level, I don't cut. So if a kid disciplinary reasons or whatever the case may be, I don't cut them like they may not get a big piece of the pie as the next guy, but. We play 35 guys, get some sort of playing time every single year. And it's there's proof, right? You know, go to njca.org and look up our stats. It's the, it's proof. And yes, we do things differently than a lot of people. But the benefits highly outweigh um, the negatives. And I don't know what the negatives would be other than you. We get we get 16 straight weeks in the fall. Division ones get four weeks of practice. And then individual work where we're practicing how many ever hours a week and we go 16 straight weeks. We lift four mornings a week. We practice two times a day on Tuesdays and Thursdays. So I just think that parents and players need to understand that not only are you opening doors, but you're going to go to a really good school. And if you come here, you're going to leave out on an academic scholarship as well as whatever you're going to get athletically. So the cost effectiveness, if you're on scholarship here, you're going to get a four year degree for probably under $20,000 easily. Right. And last time I checked sitting in an employment room with HR, they're not going to say, Oh, this guy's got a business degree from you know, Oklahoma state university. Wow. Yeah. Oh, wait, 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 whoa, we didn't see this. He went to a junior college before that. Right. That, that doesn't happen. Your degree is your degree. Your four-year degree is your four-year degree. It doesn't matter that you saved $40,000 in the process for the first two years of it. Right. No, that's a good point. That's all, those are great, all great points. And I, I love what you said about also getting drafted because, you know, a lot of kids want to obviously, you want to play professional baseball, but they don't realize that going to a four-year school, you're not going to get drafted, uh, uh, you know, uh, your freshman year. In junior college, you're able to. So, um, and I, I just I just feel also that um, that kids can mature a lot more. And I, th I feel like they're more ready to go to a four-year school um, because sometimes when they go to a four-year school, they might be playing against kids that are, you know, 21, 22, maybe 23, who knows? Um, and, and these guys are just barely coming out of high school. So I, I'm just saying it from, I'm speaking from my, from my own experience. And I felt like I was a lot more mature by the time I got to a four year school. So I, 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 those are all great, great points. I really, I'm glad you said all that, all that stuff. So, um, now what about when it comes to start looking for colleges, um, what age do you think they should start looking? Do, do, you, do you think they start, they should start looking as a freshman, sophomore in high school or? When do you um, <clears throat> there, I think that there are recruiting services that are very beneficial and probably an unpopular opinion, but unpopular to, I'll just tell you this. If you're starting your junior year, I'm okay with it. If you want to start reaching out. Before that, if you're paying money to go to camps, if you're paying money to get on recruiting services and websites and all of that, you are absolutely wasting your money. Mm -hmm. So if you were playing on a select team and going to East Cobb and getting seen there and going, doing the perfect game circuit, doing, I, I don't think, I honestly don't think it's a negative as a freshman or a sophomore to go get your metrics taken and have your own profile created on like prep baseball report. Right. I don't think that that's a negative at all. Uh, that's a highly utilized recruiting tool. And I know from firsthand experience, having, um, you know, been around them and, and done things for them and knowing people that work for them, that they do things absolutely the right way. And it's not a money grab. A lot of these things, a lot of these services that you're going to run into, um, if you're going to a camp at the University of, as a freshman, 
I, I, I don't see it. I, I don't, you're, you're going to get found out in other ways. If you're that good to commit as a freshman and probably about 50% of the kids and, I, and I'm spitballing um, that commit as true freshmen uh, get dumped by the time they're a senior right. and they get told, we don't have the money that we thought we were going to have. You didn't develop how you thought you're not going to play yada, 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 yada. Uh, it's unfortunate. Um, I have two of those guys on my club right now that mm. were committed to uh, one, a big 12 school, one, an sec school as freshmen and one as a sophomore and they're here and they never wow. showed up there. Wow. So I, I think if you're going to, if you want to go and, get your metrics taken and develop uh, a profile. I think prep baseball report is outstanding. Uh, they're the one I have the most experience with. So if you're going to do it once as a freshman, once as a sophomore, once as a junior, you're going to have your own page and you're going to have video progressions of um, what you're doing. So they're charging you money, but it's a service. So, I can, whenever I find out about a kid or somebody, somebody messaged me yesterday, said there's a kid um, in a smaller town outside of Oklahoma City that can play. I think he can play. And they Facebook messenger me. So the first thing I do is I go to Prep Baseball Report, and then I go to Google, then I go to Twitter, then I go all sorts of social media because I want to know everything about them, like, most importantly, their ability right off. And then if they check the boxes, then I keep going. Uh, I I'll, I'll oftentimes look for uh, reasons not to recruit the kid uh, right. because that's a lot easier to vet them in that process. But I think as, at the beginning of your junior, like the summer before your junior year, I don't think that that's too soon. I think that that's really good timing. Uh, if you're going to go to a camp, a showcase camp to get your metrics, um, I think it needs to be very affordable. Right. So I, I think that if you do that as a freshman to get used to it, the pro style workout environment, it needs to be affordable. You don't need to be breaking the bank to, cause you're not really, you're not getting what you pay for. Right. So, right. Yeah. And I've had, right. And I've had different opinions from different coaches, but, um, <clears throat> You know, it's kind of interesting what you said there about the metrics and all that stuff that you actually look at. Because uh, that's what I was going to ask if you actually look at them or you don't really care for it. Um, because some coaches, you know, they just they just want to see where you're at, not necessarily the metrics. But um, that, that's pretty pretty good point. Also, <clears throat> I feel like a lot of parents, they want to go out there and spend a lot of money thinking that, you know, a Division One school is waiting for them out there, the, those showcases. And I don't, I don't think that's the case. So, um, now, when it comes to... Uh, you know, reaching out to you, um, what would be the best way? I know you said that you would look at those uh, metrics, but what would be the best way to reach out to you? Do you think it would be more, it would be better to send you an email with a video or just send you an email first or show up to the school or what, what would be the best way? I, the, the best way for us is we have to see you. Like, video is video. I understand that. But we host showcase camps for that exact reason. I get at least at least 10 to 15 emails a day from kids saying, I'm interested in your program. And it's all the same stock. Um, I'm a leader. I'm a hard worker. I'm all of this stuff. And I'm like, okay, I, I, if I'm interested in your ability, I don't care about that. Because if I'm interested in your ability – and I think that you could be a fit for us athletically, then I'm going to look at your GPA. I'm going to call your coaches. I'm going to call anybody that might know you to find out if you are a hard worker, you are a leader, you are all these things that every single kid puts in their email. Uh, so I think the best thing for us is to like, is to be in front of us in a showcase environment to where we can see, um, your metrics and your skills because exit velo arm velocity running all of those things are outstanding but it doesn't mean that you're a good baseball player right so we have to see your ability and if the metrics line up to being able to develop then we will then in turn go and see if you can play the game because that's the most important piece of it mm -hmm. 
So, so how, how, how do you figure that out? Is, is it at the showcase, at the, show, uh, at the the camps that you guys have at the school, or is that how you figure out if they can play? Yeah, well, we have, we have like four different showcases, and I think it's like $100 or something like that. And we give tangible evidence back to the kid. So if they want to take that and say, at Allen Community College's showcase, I was this, 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 and this, and they want to email that out, they can do so, and I can easily verify it. We've actually, t uh, one year we took videos and created YouTube channels for every single kid, and that got to be a lot of work, uh, but that's what we're trying to do is if you're not a fit for us, it doesn't mean that you're not a fit somewhere else. So if you come to one of our showcases, then we're going to do what we can to try to help you to continue playing college baseball. And unfortunately some kids just aren't good enough. And I will absolutely tell the kid or the parents that, Hey, I don't foresee him playing college baseball. Right. No, I mean, that's pretty cool that you guys do that for, for the kids. Cause I mean, sometimes schools can get a little greedy, but I know it is a lot of work to, to edit all those videos. And cause I, you know, I, I, edit, you know. I, I had a bunch of videos myself and it, and it takes a long time. So, um, but now, when it comes to social media, I know you mentioned something about social media. You know, you look at their social media stuff. Um, what's your recommendation for them? Because I, I'm pretty sure you look at the social media and if you see something that's not appropriate, um, I don't know that you would want to go on with that kid. Uh, I, I, <clears throat> no. <laughs> so, uh, like I said, we do extensive research and um, there has been times that we've seen a controversial tweet or um, Instagram post or somebody retweeted something or liked something or, and it doesn't, it, it's not good. And so mm -hmm. immediately you just get a line drawn through your name. I mean, uh, like up there, you know, like you get, you get crossed off very quickly. Right. So, um, because it, it like that's a, a character revealer is all it is, you know. Mm. And um, unfortunately, with this day and age, you know, we have to. Uh, if you retweet something like that, people there's celebrities that, you know, tweet something and then delete it right away. Well, somebody saw it and screenshotted it. Yeah. Because yeah. then they're gonna get their likes and clicks because you know they caught you. You know, mm -hmm. so I, I just think. 95 to 99%. Um, and by the way, anytime I give you statistics, those are absolute guesses. And I'm hoping it's within 5% of what I say. But right. the kids, the kids are clean. They understand. Um, they have good families. They have parents that are fact checking them and making sure that they're not putting stupid stuff. But you will run into um, it happened this fall. We we were on a kid and um we found a couple tweets that were off the wall and we just said, Hey, listen, you know, uh, we're going to go in a different direction because you don't align with how we align uh, morally is what I said. So that's where we were at. Right. <clears throat> yeah. I just, uh, I ask you that because I want parents and, and kids out there to realize how important it is. Like coaches will look at it. Um, and obviously, obviously it's out there to, to the public. So, um, so they'll look at it. Um, now, what about when it comes to a four-year school? So when do you know if they're ready for a four-year school or if they're ready for a, uh, a junior college? How, how do they make that decision? Uh, I think a lot of that is um, it, it, life will tell you. Um, so if you're – if you're sitting there, you're junior, you, everyone is committing as freshmen and sophomores and some juniors. Rarely do kids commit their senior year. So if you're going in, if you're in the middle of your junior year and you haven't got a phone call from a four-year school and you're putting all your eggs and carrying around your, your Division One basket so you can look fantastic on social media and you care about what other people think, uh, then keep carrying that basket around and – you know, unfortunately, nowadays, you could probably make quite a bit of money selling those eggs out of that basket. Um, but 
it, it's it, if you have life will tell you. So if you haven't gotten contacted by the schools that you're interested in and that you see yourself at, then you probably might want to listen to the other schools that are calling you instead of turning your nose up at them because you're going to turn around and end up calling them at the end of your senior year because no division one schools reached out to you. And by that time, the two year school is probably going to say, if it's our case, we're going to say, Hey, uh, yeah, I appreciate it. Um, the money that we had that we talked about, I don't have it anymore. So if mm -hmm. you want to come, you can pay your own way. Yes. It's, it's inexpensive. I understand that, but it, they've got to understand that life is going to tell you it, it just be logical about it. You know, if you're getting calls from two year schools, like four, two year schools and no four year schools, chances are that's where your ability lies. Mm -hmm. And it just, it will tell you, and you've got to be realistic. And, you know, I told a kid, um, I had a kid that came here and we just had a meeting in my office and he walked on here, paid his own way, was not recruited by anyone coming out of high school. And he signed at a division one school right now, two wow. years later. And he was trying to narrow down his process and make his decision. And he was, he was getting kind of greedy by about it. And I just kind of told him, I said, Hey, like you didn't have anywhere to go. And now you're being greedy with the process and talking about this and talking about that aspects of the school schools that you're choosing from, which is not realistic. And so I just really feel that the process will let you know. And if you're if you're hanging on and your goal is to go to X, Y, Z, uh, I'd have to look up the statistic. But Mississippi State won the national title a few years back. Right. Mm hmm. How many junior college players, how many kids transferred from junior college that played on their national title team or were on their national title roster? I would like anybody listening to this to go look up that statistic. And then you tell me that you're too good for junior college. Right. Because yeah. if you feel like you're too good for junior college, you will get worked into the ground and you will quit. That's just mm -hmm. facts. Right. Yeah, you, you definitely don't want to be taking too long and then, uh, you know, thinking you're too good for junior college. And that's pretty much where you probably belong at first. Um, and then you might lose your opportunities, like you're saying. <clears throat> now, if let's say they have. Let's say a kid has multiple offers, um, you know, between uh, junior college and four years of school. Um, so what, how would you choose where to go? Um, is it more maturity level or grades or? I, you, yeah, no, I, I think I think grades uh, figure in uh, if you're going to go into a university, a division one school or a four year school or a division two or an NAIA. There's several very good uh, schools at those levels as well. Mm -hmm. it, it Are you comfortable with walking into a auditorium? of 500 people where you are a social security number. They don't care if you come. There's nothing holding you accountable to show up. Are you comfortable with that? Mm -hmm. Or would you rather our our class sizes are capped capped at 25 per class. Mm -hmm. So your student to teacher ratio at 500 to 1 versus max 25 to 1. I teach two classes. I got 11 kids and 12 kids uh, students in those classes. So you're getting one-on-one -on -one attention pretty much if, if you want to. So if you're not there, they're going to know the accountability piece for us. So you got to ask yourself if, if engage whether or not you think that you could survive in that environment because there's several kids that can and there's several kids that cannot. Right. And they need the structure of a junior college. Right. <clears throat> That's a pretty good point. What about if they don't have any offers at all? So like, do you recommend just just being a walk on and and just kind of giving it a shot and see what happens? Or what what do you recommend that in that in that case? Uh, I think and so I developed the uh, I developed something for that reason. Um, we have a developmental program here, 
And it is designed for kids that don't have offers that they want to go to a cost effective environment and they get to be on a uh, be in a program. So we have a varsity team that has 35 players on it. And then we have a developmental team that has 15, 20 players on it, um, sometimes more. And they pay their own way and they come here to try to keep going and they want to keep playing. And a lot of times the structure of that allows them to make better grades, uh, be more accountable. They have someone to answer to and they get to continue to play the game. Uh, and that's that's important. Uh, we've had several kids come through here. I actually had a kid last year um, mm -hmm. who went to a junior college out of high school, uh, flunked out, went and uh, took kind of some part-time classes here and there. He was delivering pizzas for Papa John's. And he emailed uh, and I responded back and said, hey, we have a developmental program. Is that something that would interest you? He said, absolutely. Uh, he was on the developmental program for a month and we pulled him up to the varsity and he signed um, probably about a 75% scholarship to a four-year school and pitched a lot for us. And all he wanted was to keep going and he wanted another chance and he wanted the structure and he came in and he's one of my favorite guys uh, and he never, he never looked down upon, well, I'm just on this developmental program. He was like, I get to play. And right. so that outlook allowed him to continue to, to develop. And he threw a lot of innings for us on our varsity and he was good. Obviously he signed, you know, a very good scholarship to a uh, four year school. That's pretty cool. Um, so we, but, so if any kid wants a chance to keep going and say you only play for two years, number one, you get to keep playing. Number two, you have structure. Number three, your resume. Mm -hmm. You you put that you were on a college baseball team for two years on your resume. And I think that kids lose sight of that. The value of that's a separator when people are looking at resumes is this this kid went to and uh, played baseball at a two-year school. So there you go. So I think if you don't have any offers, find somewhere that has an opportunity for you that's cost effective. But let me, let me I just kind of want to be clear on this. So if they're on the development program, I mean, do this, so they, they're still a freshman or it doesn't count towards their eligibility. It, it, it counts. It, so they play their own separate season. So they we have two different programs in two different seasons. So they play a fewer amount of games and they play against other teams. Uh, like we play all four year schools, developmental teams. So it does count as a year of eligibility. But there has been times where a kid um, has developed and has more ability. And I think in the future could be on our varsity program, mm -hmm. then we will redshirt them in the spring. And okay. then they start all over again one year later uh, as a true freshman. But they can go from that development program to a four year school. Correct. And okay. they do. <clears throat> okay. Okay. Well, that's cool. That's pretty awesome. Um, now, when it comes to uh, being a successful player, at the uh, junior college level, what what makes a successful college player, and then uh, which will allow them to go to a four year school? <laughs> uh, I think a lot of people don't understand the schedule. Um, ours is very unique uh, because we are able to be unique, and we have to separate ourselves from everyone else mm -hmm. uh, from the developmental side of it. Um, so in the fall, we start day one. School starts on Monday. You're lifting at 6 a.m. Uh, then, then you get checked into breakfast by a coach. You eat with your teammates. You take your hat off. Um, then you go to class. Then you go to lunch. Then you go to practice. And then uh, the next day, you are checked into breakfast on a Tuesday. You go to your 8 a.m. class. You're done at 930. Um you lift at 9.30, you practice at 10.30, you go eat at 
you practice at 2.30, you go home and eat at 6. And every Tuesday, Thursday, we have, you know, Wednesday's your morning off. You don't have to be up at the school until 7.45 for breakfast check-in. Um, Thursday, same. Uh, breakfast, weights, practice, lunch, practice, dinner. We don't, we schedule our classes around, um, you don't have anything past 9.30 on Tuesday, Thursday. And all of our guys are on pace to graduate. If you aren't on pace to graduate and don't have a plan on pace to graduate, then I will remove you from the program. That is one reason I will cut someone, is if they aren't on schedule to graduate. All the four-year schools that come watch our players know that every guy on the field can get into their school mm -hmm. and because they're going to have a two-year degree. Uh, and so Friday, 6 a.m. weights, breakfast, class, lunch, practice. Saturday, 18 innings, we're going to play. Sunday, if I'm feeling nice, I'll give you the day off. After church, we might practice if I'm not, you know, um, feeling okay about us. So you, right. we did, we went for, I think it was, I think we went for 16 straight days in the fall. Uh, where they were practicing every single day. And wow. after the 16th, or I don't remember what day it was, I think it was like the 12th day or something, um, just for morale, we have two grills outside of our clubhouse, and everybody it was, bring your own meat. And everybody brought their own meat. We fired up the grill and cooked, and we sat around. Our, we have a big hitting pavilion right outside of our clubhouse and our locker room, mm -hmm. and we all sat around and ate and you know, shot, uh, shot the crap. Um, and that was nobody complains because they know going in, that's what they sign up for. But a lot of being a successful player is absolutely just showing up Get right. to the next day. Every kid I could bring in kid after kid after kid and been like, Hey, do you ever question, do you ever question what you're doing here? Every single one of them would be, or, but for the most part, they would say, yeah, I did. And I had an older guy say, hey, man, just just put one foot in front of the other, be where your feet are, and show up tomorrow. Just show up. Just show up. And so that's what being a <laughs> successful player is, is you look at any professional baseball player, they all have a rigorous, detailed oriented business like all day long routine that they do every single day mm -hmm. 8 a.m breakfast 9 a.m weights 10 45 they might take an hour to watch tv or film really and then they eat lunch and then they go get some swings in the cages then they're out on the field for ground balls and then they're out on the field for batting practice and then they're back in they eat a certain thing then they go out and they play then they go home, they eat dinner, and they get up and do it all over again because 162-game season, there's no other way you can survive if you don't have a routine. You can't right. just – and so that's what we do is we get guys in a routine to where I had guys telling me that they went home for Christmas break, and they're like, I got up at 7.15 every morning, and I couldn't <laughs> help it. You right. know, and they're like, so what did I do? I went and lifted because that's just what I'm used to doing. Right. And so it gets them into a routine to where um, that allows them to have the success. So work is all we do around here. We're not a big look at me culture. Um, we're not huge on social media. A lot of people probably don't know who we are. And I'm okay with that because the guys we get are very blue collar, hardworking. And these emails I get that said, I'm a hard worker. I'm this, I'm that. Eh. Yeah, we'll see. We'll yeah. see. It's how it's easy. It's easy to do this, but it's a lot harder to go and put it put in the work. Right. <clears throat> yeah. No, that's a pretty good point because one thing is typing it up, and another thing is going through it. Um, <clears throat> now, the last thing I want to ask you before I ask you the last four fun questions here. Um, so, what do you think? Which you kind of somewhat answer already. Um, what do you think? Uh, why do you think players? Uh, you know, failed to finish school, I guess. Why, why would they quit? Because uh, the, re the reason why I ask you this, because I remember, and I always say this, because when, back when I was playing, um, you know, I, I would come in the fall and you would get a lot of kids and then come back in the spring. I'm like, where are these guys at? They don't come back. So what, right. why does that happen? 
Um, culture. Structure. Mm-hmm. Very, very well put. Um, we mm-hmm. had one kid not return out of all of them, out of the varsity and the developmental program. Mm-hmm. And uh, we have a kid from Oklahoma that he kind of, you know, hit the nail on the head. And it's it's right here. Like, I don't know if you can read that. Yeah. It's FURTA. Like, yeah. I mean, if you're – if you're for if you're for the boys like for the boys and you're about more than yourself and you do everything for the people around you then that's the culture that's created so it's a lot harder to quit when people are counting on you and so regardless of the slice of the pie that these guys get um they know that their family and their teammates are counting on them you you go eat breakfast with somebody every day for 16 straight weeks and tell me that it's comfortable for you to say, Hey, I think I'm going to quit. Right. You tell me that's comfortable because mm-hmm. you've grown to count on that person. Number mm-hmm. one, to sit right next to you and eat every morning and to converse with you trust that person. So it, it's the culture and the structural side of things. And yes, we do things a lot different, but if you aren't for your teammates and for the brand, and for your team, if you're not for the boys, like you can quit. Go ahead. Right. Go on. Right. No, that's a pretty good point. It's hard to to quit when you're when you've been together for so long. Um, no, I and I and I, uh, you know, I'm very I'm passionate about this stuff, man. Like I am because I I, I don't care about wins and losses. I, I, like I said, I won a national championship. I have a national championship rank. I have no idea where it's at. <laughs> Couldn't begin to tell you. I don't care. Like I, I do care for those guys and their memories, but not for my own sake. Um, I, I, it's it's kind of fun to say, I guess, but I was more more pleased that I didn't screw it up for them, the players mm-hmm. that I was coaching, than I was the elated because that's what I set out to do. So I've transitioned since 2014 and being about more than um, – being about more than just wins and losses, you know, right. it, it's about the culture and it's about their memories and their experience. And when you have good experience in a good environment, it's a lot harder to quit. Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, uh, I don't want to keep you on too long. I do want to wrap it up with this uh, four questions here that I like to ask. Um, okay. Everybody. So what would be your favorite uh, player to coach? Uh, at the school like who's who's that favorite guy no, you don't have to say names by the way but and, um, and why i uh that's i a lot of times it's somebody who aligns with you and your personality that played kind of like you did um uh, there's there's several that come to mind um but it's it's generally there's a lot of them because it, it whenever you're here you align to the the ideas and the beliefs and the morals and the culture and you know we pray before every game and we you know God family country you know it, it's God country family all that like that's how we align so it's generally the kids that align how I align and we mm-hmm. align and so there's several of them. More than there's not. Right, right. <clears throat> what about your least favorite player to coach? I, they're not here anymore. I don't coach them. <laughs> right. That's a good point. Because well, because if they're if they're my least favorite, that's because they don't align with our work ethic and what we stand for and what we believe in. So they end up quitting, and. Mm-hmm. That is, that's the process I was telling you about with doing this. Once you find somebody you like athletically is, Hey, what's he like? You find something like police academies. They, 
try they will find something bad about you something negative about you if you're trying to get into a police academy i know that firsthand my cousin was in charge of doing that and he told me we will call until we find something bad about you and we kind of do the same thing so we don't run into that like we had one kid uh not return and that was for a personal family reason um so we do our job before they get here so i don't really have anybody that i don't uh, that i dislike to coach right what about your favorite team you've ever coached uh, you don't have to say you or anything like that but why is it your favorite team who i would say probably my my second year here was my favorite team uh because they were they were the biggest building block um in developing the culture here and they were just dogs like they would run through a brick wall they would do whatever it took and it, it just they were resilient they were tough because they had to be because i'm trying to get guys i'm trying to get the culture how it needs to be and so i just beat them into the ground and i've been invited to more weddings and more you know because those guys i this this right here I, I don't know if you can see but this is this is a picture of them uh and it's the only picture i have in my entire office there's nothing on the walls um this is them at these are all the guys on that team that were in phi theta kappa which is a business um it's a business uh fraternity basically but it's for uh it's so anyway you get scholarships if you're in, involved in that but you have to have a certain gpa um so my second year here was my second and third year here were my my favorite group of guys so that's like three classes in one um so far i really like this group but yeah. you know everybody's got a game plan until they get punched in the mouth so we'll see how right. the spring goes right no i like that i always use that um now what about um biggest pet peeve as a coach wasting time standing around yeah right and i and i jokingly tell our guys like hey and my assistant coaches um i say i'm on salary i'm not hourly so I, I don't get paid on how much time I can spend out here. I get paid on being able to get stuff done. So our practices are very high energy, high paced. Um, they sometimes don't last a long time, but the volume of stuff we get done, um, we don't have, we don't stand around in a group and talk for more than 30 seconds. I address our team before practice. I address them after it's never longer than 30 seconds. If it is, there's a reason behind it. And, we have our meetings in classrooms. Mm -hmm. That's pretty cool. Awesome. Well, coach, I really appreciate you for your time. Uh, I know a lot of uh, players and coaches and parents out there will benefit from this. Uh, and if you guys are watching this on YouTube, um, I'm going to leave the link below to his uh, uh, the website of the school so you can go check it out. I highly, I highly recommend it. And uh, please like, subscribe, give a thumbs up, and remember, keep it moist style. Hey guys, Moist Style Baseball here. If you're interested in having me come out to your city for a fielding camp or a hitting camp, or if you're in the Oklahoma area and you're looking for private lessons or group lessons, you can shoot me a text at 251-509-3815. You can also email me at moiststyle33 at gmail.com. Keep it moist style.